Okay, so in this video clip, uh, I'm going to take a look at exploratory data analysis of the Ames house price uh, data set for Iowa. Um, and, and the end product here is a collab, but the source for the code I've taken from Kaggle. So I'll just show you the Kaggle link. And go in and it's from Lee Clemmer and <clears throat> it's a little bit dated, but still a very, very useful, right? So six years old at this stage, but still extremely useful. Um, I'm just going to focus on the exploratory data analysis, um, but there's more in, in here. Now, if we wanted to uh, use this for um, with Colab, I would need to sign in. Okay, so I need to put into a Google account where I've actually signed into Google. So um, let's... Uh, Open up here for a second, control V. Uh, so I'm in again, it's the it's the Ames House Price data set. And I'm looking at um a Python notebook prepared by Lee Clemmer, and that's from six years ago and quite a number of views, and I'm not surprised why. And he mentions the link to uh, Dean DeCock, who developed originally uh, the data set using data from the Ames um, Assessor Office in uh, Iowa. And he also acknowledges here uh, different contributions already made on the uh, Kaggle uh, website and, and a book as well, stack regressions um, and so on. So they're worth looking at in their own right. Um, might be useful to take a look at the paper, which was published in the Journal of Statistics uh, Education. So that's by Dean. And Dean did a fine job putting all this together. And the data set was data, again, coming from uh, the uh, Ames Assessor's Office, for, so from City Hall, who've responsibility for attributing correct valuations and properties so that um, accurate uh, tax can be imposed. Uh, the assessor's office has nothing to do with tax in the sense that they don't apply tax or impose tax, but they, the property values are important for raising uh, local property tax in the US and local property tax is essential for policing or schools, funding schools, maintenance of roads and so on. Okay, so if I go back into the Kaggle um, portal. I'm signed into my Google account, but I want to open up in Google Colab. So there is an option here, open in Google Colab. Now there's other options, download the code and so on, but I want to open directly into Colab. And then I want to verify that the code also actually works. Now uh, we can save it, right? Save a copy. So I can save this into my own drive, right? Which is always a sort of useful uh, so that I can um, go back any amendments or changes I introduce. Um, I've got those recorded. So let's just put a timestamp 26.03.24. So it's 26th of March, 2024. And again, it's coming from Lee Clemmer. Now the link to the data is established here in the first code cell. So if we run this, it might take a second, but it will allow us to bring the data in and we don't have to worry about uploading to the content folder um, the data that's available directly from the Kaggle website, the, the Ames house price data set, we can bring directly in. So it's downloaded and non-compressed and um, we can come down. Now there's a, a couple of resources there that are sort of worth taking a look at. So the original data set and the data documentation um, 82 variables, um, so 82 columns and 2,930 observations. And there's sort of links here as well to the Ames House Price, Ames Assessor's Office, right? And what they do here for revaluation of your property. So they're the city assessor. And what uh, you're while perhaps reading through that, that they're, you know, the county 
So the ongoing process of gathering and reviewing information, measuring and listing new construction, investigating sales of real estate is used to determine the fair market value of a property. Market value is the estimate of the price that it would sell for in the open market on the first day of January of each year of assessment. This is referred to as the arms length transaction or willing buyer seller. And the um, assessor's primary duty and responsibility to assess all real property, which includes residential, commercial, and industrial classifications of property within its jurisdiction at 100% market value as of January 1 of the current year, agricultural real property assessed at 100% productivity and net earning capacity value, um, and so on. So uh, the assessor does not collect taxes, calculate taxes, determine the tax rate, set policy for board of review. Okay. Interesting in its own right, because of course, um, if the funding model for uh, public services is through property taxation, you need to have accurate measures of the property's values. And so the setting up the the, the uh, data set, one would imagine is quite um, accurate given the number that, that there's a sort of a tension between the key stakeholders. Uh, obviously, City Hall wants to raise taxes. Obviously, the property owners want to uh, um, not overvalue the property. So these valuations, um, because there's tension in relationships, should be quite accurate. Um, and also, um, if you look at here, the link, the Beacon Schneider, we can go to the actual website here and look at actually what's going on. So there's a, a property, we have a photo, and then we have a description, and then quite a bit of detail about the holder of the property. And um, information relating to the property. And then the, the valuation, the gross value, um, and then uh, taxes due on the property. And then the history of the taxes. So, and this the um, and actually, as one goes through more the kind of the detail, you understand a little bit uh, why each of the columns is collected in a manner that a little bit too granular, perhaps for data science projects. Um, but uh, one can understand why you would go into this level of nuance on the data set, right? And uh, of course, we have a map. Again, interesting in its own right. We can zoom out. Um, we have um, Ames Comp and so on. So there's a richness here in the data set, soil report and so on, pictometry, imagery. So I, my feel is that when they apply a value on your property uh the um the kind of the hard work of figuring out um it just to find evaluation is there so uh, it's a very revealing right and definitely in terms of an, an end use for the data science um we are able to you know see why um property values and being able to estimate and project and predict property values based on certain characteristics would be important. So we've loaded in the data and we now in, load in um, the uh, libraries and let's see if we can get our data brought in. So that the data would appear to have the training data and the test data has been split in the manner consistent with what's on the Kaggle website. And for the training data set, there's 1,460 and for the test data set, there's 1,459. So it's a 50-50 split. And I presume here we have the sales price. And in the test data set, we don't have the sales price. Right. Um, OK, so we can take a look at the train data. Right. And quite a big data set and the test. OK. And so um, again, just in terms of the information of the data set, uh, do we have um, strings or do we have numerical values? Uh, that's important. And 
uh, also to be able to put together a distribution of what the property prices look like. Now we don't have the full data set here, as far as I can see. Yeah, we don't have the full data set, but we can see the bulk of properties in that 2006, 2010 period were falling below 200,000. And of course, Ames is not on the coast. Ames is, um, is uh, Midwest and as North as uh, Chicago. So probably quite a cold place in winter. Some properties do reach in excess of uh, 700,000, but not many. And I, I guess we could go into Zillow and get a more up-to-date. Also sort of the distribution of properties when they were built and looked like there had been a property um, boom in construction in that period 2000 up to 2006, which is consistent with our understanding of the uh, macroeconomic behavior. Also 1920s looked quite good, but 1930s a drop off in construction consistent with the depression. And then in the post-war era, a surge in the 1980s, interest rates were very high. That may have had devastating effect on um, new home construction and then um, a, a normalization and then a property boom again. Right, so it looks quite interesting. And uh, some, um, we, um, a pivot table then that we map out and years sold and months sold on the properties. So we have these property values that go from 2006 to 2010. And looks like July is a pretty busy month, right? July and June are the busy months for buying and selling properties. In winter, properties are not as green, not as um, leafy, and just more difficulty in moving property in, in winter. So less activity. And then the neighborhoods, right? So again, um, North Ames, College Creek, Old Town, Edward, Somerset. And if you go into Google, maps, you would be able to find those places. Also, under definitions, uh, you can find um, if you go to um, comprehensive exploration, I mean, if you go to another uh, data set there, or go to the original paper, or a, a good link is um, John C. Hall, See all his web page. So if we go to John's web page, um, a financial modeler, but in recent times has delved into machine learning, and he has um, definitions available for the Iowa house price case, which he uses extensively in his textbook. And that's why in part I'm developing uh, some analysis here and making use of resources. Okay, so quite a bit in there that you can go through and I'll leave a video clip I developed previously as well embedded in um, this collab that I'll share underneath the video. Okay, so if I go back into our notebook we can come down a little bit further and get some additional visualization right so how big are the property price so how big are houses in square feet and mostly in excess of a thousand square feet a thousand square feet would be i presume like a du duplex and then you're into um, a thousand eight hundred, two thousand, like four bedroom house, perhaps. Um, and then these are bigger properties, so not extremely. Um, you know, you know the properties are not extremely big. Uh, around Ames, it would appear. Um, thousand four hundred square feet would be sort of median, perhaps in in um the British Isles. Uh, 2,000 square feet. Uh, so it is uh, quite far north. So uh, maybe it's expensive to heat. And then in summer, probably quite warm. So expensive to cool as well. Um, 
on the square footage. So in terms of acres, so the lot size is maybe typical third of an acre. So not extremely large uh, property uh, lots either in acres. Um, an acre would be quite large, half an acre uh, would be quite generous. So I think we're typically looking at a third of an acre. And a user defined function, and we can map out um, the sales price and the density, and get a measure of skewness and kurtosis, so the extent to which they skew and uh, fat tails. And um, I may have had to modify this code in the collab I shared, it's deprecated. But I think the code actually works if you come down. Okay, so in the in the file that I shared here, uh, that I'll share on the link to the collab, I think I've resolved that issue. Okay, um, let's just try here. So sparsity. Okay, so it it seems to have worked right, but there's a deprecated or about to be deprecated function. Okay, and again, huge amount of detail. And a way of, you know, classifying these categorical variables and then mapping them out is available there, right? So I, I won't go too deep into the regression analysis, um, but you can explore that in, in your own time. But a very nice notebook, uh, very interesting, well produced. Uh, I think we can see the finished product. Don't have, the f yeah, we can see the finished product in the on the actual uh, Kaggle site here itself, and some interpretation of the outputs. Right. Okay. Now, uh, I'm I'm going through this because uh, in some part I want to. Um, at a later stage, come back and take a look at the analysis provided in this textbook, Machine Learning in Business. And the I Iowa house price case with linear regression, with decision trees, support vector machines, and quite a bit of the textbook actually is built around the, the uh, Ames house price data set. Um, so it's uh, further on, there's neural networks, but Initially, uh, the um, linear regression, decision trees, and support vector machines are all provided. If we go in, we can see the HTML file. And linear regression here is performed. And also, um, lasso, ridge, and elastic net. Right. So uh, using the um, regularization techniques, we're able to prune back a little bit the overwhelming dimensionality of the, the data set. And that's quite a powerful technique. And we can take a look at the decision trees here just to see perhaps the factors that are driving um, values. Okay. And, um, and that can be useful, right, uh, for classifying. <laughs> and then a uh, support vector machine which is in Excel. Okay, so um, I leave the, the, um, the video there.